Right, hello lads and lasses and welcome back to Boys Down Under and firstly, I do apologise for literally posting no content regarding Celtic against Dundee. Didn't do a preview, I didn't do a match reaction, I've just been absolutely bogged this weekend with work and stuff so I do apologise for that but today we do have another video about who we all are giving our hearts to this Christmas and Postacoglu as well as an update about the transfer of Days and Maida. Now that will come at the end of the video, so stick around till then. Before we get into the video though, if you are enjoying the channel and enjoying the content, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and in fact, we have another tier of memberships available. It's even cheaper than the first one. So if you do want to help support the channel even further, that is the best way to do so. But without further ado, let's get into it. So this video was requested requested by a subscriber of the channel and it was to talk about Ange Postacoglu. Well, not really Ange Postacoglu, but more so the Aussie side of Celtic journalism. And so that's what we're going to do. Now, this a lot ties into Ange's influence at Celtic, hence the title. So bear with me here. Now, before Ange's arrival at Celtic, you know, Celtic was known to a lot of people down here, but we were, it was never really heard of. By that I mean people were aware of Celtic, and you. but that's the thing, we were aware of them. Like, my mates knew who they were, but they never really heard of Celtic, apart unless it came from me. Really, all you'd hear about Celtic was every time they won a title in that nine of a row, or uh, the domestic unbeaten run, I think that got mentioned one or twice, and then you'd also have the occasional mention in the news articles, like right in the bottom corner or on the radio about the Glasgow derbies. And look, then, and also there was social media and Instagram is my form of social media and I follow a lot of football accounts, Australian and British, and you'd only hear about Celtic on the British channel, on the British accounts, never on the Australian ones. Now, really before Postacoglu, there, like I said, there were only two things the Australian media covered like on on a consistent basis i guess you could say it was the results of the glasgow derbies as as well as the winner of the scottish league and i think that was that was all really celtic heard we all heard about celtic down here there was really nothing about celtic ever except for those odd few things but then boom eddie howe buggered off away from celtic and then the reports came in and every single sports media outlet down under was reporting the news. Ange Postacoglu set to make biggest managerial move in Australian football. Postacoglu linked a shock move to coach Scottish giant Celtic. Ange Postacoglu has emerged as a shock favourite for the Celtic football club job. And that was only a handful of the reports and headlines that were coming out. Legitimately, I don't think you guys understand. My whole Instagram feed was clogged with these rumours from the British football accounts not knowing who Ange Postacoglu was to the Australian ones going mental about it. And then we had that period of where everyone in Scotland was trying to find out and figure out who Ange Postacoglu was. You get the reports from the Australian media outlet outlining what Celtic fans should expect from Ange Postacoglu, those sort of things. And then, boom, again, not even two weeks later from those uh, early rumours, breaking news, Ange Postacoglu confirmed as the new Celtic coach. And that got reported a lot, double the amount that I think the initial rumours got reported. Because the thing you guys have to remember, down here in Australia, we've never had a manager at a club as huge as Celtic. Ange being appointed in the J-League, was big, and then when he won the title there, that was that was really big. Like that got a lot of coverage down here in Australia. But yet again, my feed was absolutely clogged up by these breaking news posts about Ange going to Celtic. And from that point forward, after after he was announced, I the, the influx of Celtic related Instagram posts, Celtic related articles, Celtic related mentions in the news that I've heard down here since his since his um, signing has been absolutely massive and I think I think it just shows that since his arrival like it's been mental like Celtic had their pre-season games being reported 
Pre-season. We're not even an, a, a, a domestic team. We're an international team, and yet we had our pre-season games being reported. You barely even hear about the Premier League's pre-season games being reported. It was, it was mental. I, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And it all, it all falls back to the fact that this was the biggest managerial move for an Australian coach in history. It, like, the only thing... The only thing about the Aussie media that I could put down on them for in their coverage of Celtic recently is that they are extremely, extremely quick to change their views. Now, I'll give you an example because it's kind of been a roller coaster, I guess we could say, for Ange at Celtic at the moment. Not really a roller coaster, but it's had its ups and downs. So, look, after he arrived, you know, we had the Champions League exit and then the loss to Hearts, and that, that caught a lot of our negative traction. And, you know, it was a lot of the Australian media jumping on what the Scottish media was reporting. Maybe Ange isn't right for Celtic. Ange to, Ange to Celtic might not be the match made in heaven everyone was making it out to be. And they, they jumped on this criticism of him very, very quickly and started reporting about it. But then boom! 6-0 Dundee, 3-0 Jablonek, 3-2 Hart, 6-0 St. Murren, 2-0 AZ Alkmaar. And the praise was just flowing, flowing, flowing in. It was literally mental. Then after those like four or five wins in a row, it, it was, it was, I, I, I think I said it, it was pandemonium. Like everyone back on the bag wagon, Australian media jumped back on the bag wagon of Ange Ball and they started hailing him as more, <laughs> like the Scottish media hailed him pretty, Celtic media hailed him a lot. But then, we had the Australian media who was just reiterating that to everyone down here. And honestly, on Instagram, it was mental. Literally, Fox Football Australia, it's an Instagram account, they report on like Australian football, literally posted four things about Celtic in a row. That is unheard of. I can't even remember seeing four posts from them about Celtic before that, ever. It was unheard of. Even in the newspapers, uh, in the newspaper I read, in the sports section, there was a whole page, a whole like page full of articles about the upcoming Glasgow derby. It, it was mental. It was mainly written by Robbie Slater, who is a former Australian international turned pundit. Played for like Blackburn Rovers, Southampton, West Ham in the Premier League. But literally, they had a whole game, a whole page previewing how Ange could literally instill himself into the heart of all Celtic fans by winning the derby. Obviously, they didn't really go to plan, but still, it was just mental to be able to read about Celtic in the paper and actually, like, not just have a couple words about their upcoming fixtures. Like, I don't, like, it literally, the turnaround from after Ange's appointment in the Celtic in Australian media was huge. And I think, I think the biggest indicator is of Ange's appointment has had on the Aussie media is because I said before, before, like I said, before the before Andrew's arrival, literally you get one story maybe every month, I'd say. One very, very minuscule story. And then that just gets upgraded to a whole page about the Glasgow, upcoming Glasgow derby. It's mental. But then, you know, Celtic hit another stump in form and the reports died down here as because, you know, it was like the honeymoon period is over. You know, we have to get back to work. And the Australian media was, a media was really just echoing the Scottish media, because really, <laughs> the Australian media doesn't really think for themselves. I'll be real, they kind of just copy what everyone else says. They jump on the bandwagons. And look, they think that when things weren't going well, they reported things weren't going well. It was as simple as that. But now, like, like I expected, the, with Celtic's form really, really improving, so is the Celtic trend again in social media. You hear results on the radio every morning. Um, after they play, it's been and but recently, I think the most important part and the most interesting part is the fans have been the talking point for the media as of the last two days. Now, all through my Instagram feed, Auss Aussie media accounts, Australian like meme accounts, literally everyone has been posting about the Green Brigade and their rendition of Last Christmas, the Postacol Glue version, and even much more, the much more professional version by David Curry when he did it on his piano. It's just that's gotten a lot of traction down here. It's kind of gone viral with the Australian media. They're loving it. They're loving the fact that Ange is being hailed sort of like a god, <laughs> a god in Scotland. And to sum up, I guess, Celtic, with Celtic news at an all-time low before Ange, has, it just it absolutely changed the whole dynamic and landscape of Celtic, of news about Celtic being reported in Australia. 
since Ange's arrival and his appointment. And I'm hoping it stays like that for many more years because I love seeing it, reading about Celtic just, you know, when I open the paper up, when I hear it on the news, it's just a bit of an old head thing to read the paper nowadays. But, you know, you get what I mean. And, yeah, that's basically it. So, like I just said, before Ange, bad. With Ange, amazing. Now, as promised, we do have some days and Maida news, which I said I'd bring to you at the end of the video, and I have got it here. And I have to, I have to start off by saying that if you're not convinced by Days and Maida and you don't want him to sign for Celtic, go look at his most recent game because he scored a hat-trick for Yokohama and all three goals, even the penalty, were absolutely sublime. The penalty, the keeper went the right way. Yeah, he still scored and he just showed every single quality of his game in each of those goals. And honestly, I think I think he would be a, he would be a great signing in January. And in terms of the January signing front, Allegedly, it's been reported that Ange is actually going to try and offload Albi and Yeti, if anyone will take him, and that is so he can free room up for Days and Maida to make his arrival at the club. Now, a trade deal is off the cards. I don't think Yokohama really want a Yeti coming to their club, but I am getting a really strong feeling that maybe, just maybe, we might be able to see Days and Maida donning the green and white hoops in the next couple of months, I'd say, along with another few Japanese players who Ange could definitely bring to the club. But that is all from me. So if you guys did enjoy the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, become a member if you wish. But until next time, hail, hail.